Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So you've already seen the picture. The model was a 19 inch head. So a little child's head or a small adult might have a 19 inch head. I'm a, I'm a grown adult, I'm short, uh, <clears throat> I'm tiny. And uh, my head is 21 and a half inches. So this is a 19, this will fit a 19 inch head which is typically um, a child's head. So if you need it smaller, you can go down in hook size. Uh, I'm using a 5mm, so if you need it smaller than 19 inches, then you can go down to 4, 4.5. If you want a baby size, you can go even lower. The pattern's going to remain the same. So let's get started. So all my yarns today are a 4 weight medium worsted. Every single one of them was bought at Walmart. Um, my light is not, my light on my camera is down a bit, but this is a better, this is, um, actually the color is yellow that you get at Walmart. All of this is worsted, you get at Walmart, it's a Red Heart Super Saver. So that's what I am using today. You don't need to, but just know that the, the size will be different. Not by much, not by much at all. You won't have to change, so if you're using just a regular yarn and not a worsted yarn that you can still use your five millimeter which is probably what your yarn calls for anyway and it'll be perfectly fine if you're using the worsted there's gonna it's my hat even though it sits on I mean you've seen the picture even though it sits on a 19 inch head it's not tight it's pretty loosey-goosey so it gives room for the child if you're using just a regular weight yarn. It's going to be absolutely perfectly fine. Um, it's just going to give a better, a better fit, not a loose fit. But I prefer working with this instead. So we're going to start with the magic ring. We instantly do a chain one when you do a magic ring like I do. So we're going to add another chain to that because we're going to be working in double crochets. I'm going to turn my light down a bit so that you can see my yarn better. Hopefully, I mean, it's white on white, but really, um, oh, I just turned it up. Sorry. Let me turn it down. Um, really though. It's just a double crochet. I mean, I'm not doing anything fancy or anything, but that should be good. So inside this magic ring, you're going to do 10 double crochets. Pull it closed. So in this project we are going to do a slip stitch and a chain two. So for every single round we're going to put a double crochet into that same space as your chain two. That's how we're starting every single round. The reason being is because I don't like seams. So my seam is directly at the back of my project and you can hardly see it. It's right there. So if you follow my directions, you're not going to have a seam that's going to be noticeable because I mean if this when this is on a head, you can't even you can hardly see my seam now. So if you follow my directions, we're not going to have a seam mark that's that prominent. 
So you're going to put two double crochets in each of these stitches. This counts, by the way. Alrighty, so you see this stitch right here that everybody tells you not to use, it's not a stitch, don't go into it, it's fake, blah blah blah. Boy, that seems really dark. Yeah, I'm going to go into that stitch and I'm going to put one double crochet. And I'm going to do that for every single round. And that's how you get no seam, basically no seam. Slip stitch, double crochet. Your next round is going to be, we're going to increase now, every single round is going to be an increase. So before we begin, put your double crochet into that chain two space. And then you're going to do one double crochet and an increase. So that's your one double crochet, two double crochet. So that's your increase, it's two in the same space. One double crochet, two double crochets. So I've come back around. I've got my 30 stitches, but I'm still going to put that extra one in there. Because I do not like seams, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Slip stitch, chain two, and put your double crochet in that chain two space. So your next round is going to be two double crochets and an increase. There's one. There's two. And then your increase is two double crochets in the same space. So at this point you should have 40 stitches and that's what my word prompts are telling you. So I've already slip stitched and chain two. You're gonna put a double crochet in that chain two space. Then you're gonna do three double crochets and an increase. That takes you up to 50 stitches. Because we started with 10 double crochets in the beginning, every row is gonna increase by 10. So there's my three double crochets and then two double crochets in the same space for the increase. So your next round is going to be four double crochets and an increase. So we're going to put our Double crochet in the same space as your chain two. That's four double crochets. Then in your next stitch, two double crochets in the same space for your increase. And repeat. So your next round is going to be five double crochets and an increase. So this will be our final round. And we'll, we should have 70 stitches at the end of the round. And then we're just going to do straight up double crochets in every stitch. So put your double crochet into that same space as your chain two. Five double crochets. And 
and then two double crochets in the same space. For your increase. And repeat. So this is what you should have. It is starting to roll. It goes this way. So for the next five rounds, you're going to just put one double crochet in each stitch around. Shove 70 stitches. And um, if you need this to be an adult size, uh, like a 22, 21 and a half, 22 inch head, if you're making this for a grown up, you're going to have to keep going around until you have about 106 stitches, I think would be probably suffice would be enough for um, an adult size head but anyway um, so I'm gonna leave you to your five rows but don't forget you have to because this is our seam which is absolutely you can't even see it so you just just try to continue to do double crochet in the same space as your chain two and then this this forbidden fake stitch that you're not supposed to use make sure you use it because this is this is what you get when you use it you get no seam so go ahead and do your five rows and I'll meet you right back here alrighty so I'm at the end of my fifth row and I just got a slip stitch to the top of that chain Oops. So at this point, I just split my yarn. Let me try that again. You can fasten off because we're going to have to reattach in another spot. So we can just tuck this bad boy to the underside. So try to actually weave and not just stick it in wherever. And try to go different directions. Let me go this way. But try not to go all the way through the hat because you don't want to see this on the other side, that's for sure. So they say three different directions confuses the yarn. So I'm going to go back this way, down a bit. So you can go, you won't be able to see it from this side, so, and it's really not that noticeable from the other side. But you certainly don't want your child's hat to pop open. So, I may take extra precautions, but I also know with certainty that my stuff's not going to fall apart. Although I did make a caterpillar once and one of its feet fell off. But I don't know how aggressive the child was with playing with it, but one of my feet fell off, so I just want to be extra, extra careful. So that's my seam. Hopefully yours looks the same, which is almost not recognizable as a seam. It's hard to see. So let's take care of this guy in the center as well so normally I would just tie a knot if I'm making an arm or whatever I would just tie a knot and you know be done with it but this is a hat it's gonna be on a head so you actually want to weave this in Did you ever notice that I can't talk and work at the same time so find your back again there's my back so I've got my seam right in front of my face. I'm going to fold the hat in half. I'm going to get a bunch of my stitch markers. So instead of just telling you numbers, I'm going to show you how I designed the ear flaps. 
This may seem unorthodox, but that's me. I can be a weirdo. So all I did was I folded the hat in half. So that's my seam, which is hard to see, I know. Which is what we want. So right here on the end, you've got two stitches. Pick one. I'm going to pick the one closest to the front because that's my back. So the one closest to the front, but you got two kind of right on the corner. I'm going to do the same thing with this side. I've got these two, but I'm going to pick the one closest to the front. So once I've got my stitch markers in here, all I did was count five stitches on either side. It is an uneven number. If you need an even number, then you just count differently than me. So I counted five on either side of the marker, not counting the space the marker's in. And I counted five on either side. So that's fifth stitch, I put a marker. And I did the same thing this way. Two, four, fifth stitch, I put a marker. And then I repeated the same thing on this side. So now I can take the middle ones out. And I've got my start and my stop points for the ear flaps. So let's reconnect. So all you're going to do is make a slip knot. Sorry, that was a little blurry. Let me get lower. Make a slip knot. So make an X. Then you're going to take this guy, you're going to lift him up, and you're going to grab the guy on uh, underneath, and you're going to pull. Or you're going to stick your hook in there and pull. So that's just a slip knot. So make it as small as your hook, and we're going to take it off, set it aside. So go into your hat. Add your yarn, pull through, you're going to make a stitch, but then you're going to, because we're going to do double crochets for the ear flaps, obviously, so even though you've made a single crochet by attaching, I still want you to put a double crochet in that same space, so that's going to be the stitch you use. So the single crochet is just for attaching, it's not, it's not going to be a working stitch. So that's the single crochet there, we're not going to use it, we're just going to use this one right there. And you won't be able to tell once the hat's done. So now I just want you to double crochet all the way across to your other stitch. You should have 11 double crochets. So that's 10 and then 11 is underneath my marker. You're going to chain 2 and you're going to turn. You're going to do 11 double crochets, making sure to get into this first stitch. So if, you, if you're holding it like this, you're not going to see that first stitch. You're going to go into this one which won't be right. You gotta pull it back and there's a stitch right in there. You're gonna put a double crochet in the first stitch and all the stitches across. So you need 11. So remember these two stitches from the beginning, that's your single crochet that you attached with and that's the double crochet you made. You're going to go into that double crochet that you made, which isn't an easy stitch, it's like any other stitch, it's awkward. So chain two and turn. So we're going to start decreasing our ear flaps. So a decrease on either side. So both sides you're going to need four stitches all together, two on this side and two on this side to do a decrease. So starting in this very first stitch, 
you're going to do a double crochet decrease. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to go into your first stitch, you're going to pull through, and then pull through two and stop. You're going to yarn over again, go into your second stitch, pull through, pull through two, then pull through three. So that's how you do a double crochet decrease. So you're going to decrease the first two, then you're going to decrease the last two. So in the middle here, you should have seven double crochets. So that's seven. I've got two stitches left and I'm going to do a decrease. Pull through two and stop. Yarn over and go into the last stitch. Pull through two. Sorry, that cut me off. My camera only runs for so long and then it turns itself off. So chain two and turn. I'll have to show you that again. So yarn over. Making sure you get into this first stitch. Pull through two and stop. Yarn over, go into your next stitch. Pull through two. Yarn over, pull through three. You should have five double crochets to do before your next decrease. So I got two stitches left. I'm going to yarn over, go into the first one, pull through two and stop. I'm going to yarn over, go into the last one, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through three. Chain two and turn. Again, we're going to do a decrease. Then you do three double crochets. The last two stitches, you're going to do a decrease. Chain two and turn. Start off with a decrease. one double crochet in the middle and then decrease all right we got three stitches you're probably wondering what in the heck do we do with three stitches we make an awesome point that's what we do ha 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 so you're going to do a decrease And then you're going to do a double crochet and that should give you a nice nice point on the end just like that and you're going to fasten off so go ahead do your second ear flap i'll put the words on the screen and i'll meet you back here I got my ear flaps done. Find the middle of your hat. I've decided to use red, not pink. For my Hello Kitty, you can use whatever color you want. So find your seam. Go into the stitch right beside it. You're going to make a slip stitch. it off. So go into the stitch next to your seam, the only stitch that you can really get into. You're going to pull through and make a single crochet, but we're going to half double crochet around this entire hat. So weaving in my end to the inside of the hat, we're going to half double crochet starting in this hole that you already attached with. No, I just did a double. 
Oh my good lord. So half double crochet, if you don't know, is yarn over, go into your space, pull through. So it's almost like a double, but it's but you pull you yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. That's a half double. So I'm gonna weave in my tail because I don't want to weave in the red through through the white, even on the inside. So you're just going to go every single stitch, you're just going to put a half double crochet all the way around the ear flaps and back up to here. The reason I chose red instead of pink is because I already did pink. So um, I am just going to cut this off. I already did pink. So because I've got, I've I've got three grand granddaughters. Um, if the if another one of them, I know one of them wants a Hello Kitty hat. If the other one wants Hello Kitty hat, then at least they won't be matching. Do you know what I mean? Like at least there'll be a, a color difference. They won't have to look like twins. But then I'm also doing a mermaid hat, so she may want a mermaid hat, but just in case she decides. So, this is why I decided to go for red. It's hard to please little girls. Um, my one granddaughter, River, she um, she's a Vampirina fan, so I was working on a Vampirina hat, an ear flap hat, but... Um, I'm having a problem putting a face on it because it looks horrible with a face so you may see a hat come off my channel that's Vampirina hat but no face. <laughs> okay. So when you get to the tippy top of the ear flap you've got one stitch here you can follow for your half double and then your next kind of stitch it's not really a stitch but it's kind of a stitch I want you to put two in there it just rounds off the corner nicely and then you can put one in there so I'm going to continue all the way around and I'll meet you on the other side Oh, and by the way, I should mention, I'm just sticking my needle in wherever I can stick my needle in because there's no stitches to follow. So I'm just jamming my needle wherever I can, wherever I can get it in, wherever I think a good spot is. So there's no stitch count. There's no rhyme or reason for what I'm doing. I'm just sticking it in. So I'm back around. Um, that's my seam, so I made sure to use that last stitch. So you can just slip stitch into the top of that stitch there, and you can fasten off. And uh, next we'll be doing the face parts. Okay, so I know I said we were going to do face parts, but I decided we're going to make the ears next because I forgot we even had to make ears. But cats have ears. So, you can do a magic ring of six single crochets. So instead of two single crochets in each stitch like we normally do, um, move my camera, maybe not. Um, we're going to do one single crochet and an increase right off the hop because we want a point on the end of our ears like cats have. So that's my, oh my god, I should put all my stitch markers away. That's my one single crochet. So that's what gets the stitch marker is your first stitch. And then... 
my next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets. Next stitch gets one, next stitch gets two. So your increase is just two stitches in the same hole. Next stitch gets one, next stitch gets the increase. So that gives you about nine stitches, not about nine stitches, it gives you nine stitches. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So that's your first one. Uh, that's your second one. And then your increase. So one, one, two, one, one, two. So the chef 12 stitches and a decent point. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. So that should take, bring you up to 15 stitches. That's number one. Three single crochets and then your increase and repeat so if you've done everything right you should end your sequence with two single crochets at your marker if you've done something wrong, it, that's not what's going to happen. So, for the next three rows, you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch, and then you're going to fasten off. That's your ear. So fasten off if you're going to work ahead of me. Well, I guess we're all working ahead, but fasten off the sewing tail. You're going to stuff this a little bit. So fasten off for the sewing tail. You should have 15 stitches and you're going to do three rounds of one single crochet in each of those 15 stitches. And I'll see you on the other side. So I got both my ears done. I got a little bit of stuffing in, didn't do much. It's up to you whether you want stuffing or not. And then I just sewed the end closed. So they're all ready to be sewn to the hat. We're gonna make everything and then we're gonna do all the sewing at the end. Kind of gives you a different perspective as to where things need to go. So uh, let's do eyes next. They're, they're so quick. They're so quick, you have no idea. You're going to do a magic ring with your 5 millimeter. And you put six single crochets. Pull your thing. Go in and slip stitch and fasten off. That's your eye. So fasten off with enough to sew with. That's your eyeball. So it doesn't need to be big because it's just a it's just a wee little wee little hat for a wee little girl.
So pull your end tight. You know, you don't have to weave this in. You can make a knot. It doesn't have to be a tight knot. If you tighten this knot, it could still kind of slip through, so you don't really want to tighten this knot. And um, when I sewed these on, I didn't actually completely sew them on. I kind of just tied them. So we'll set these aside. And we'll get our yellow for our news. I'm going to light my camera up a little bit now that we're not working with white anymore. So uh, the nose is going to be no magic ring. You're going to do a slip knot. You're going to chain three. You're going to go one single crochet into the next stitch. The last stitch you're going to do four single crochets. All in the same stitch. So pull your slip knot shut because that's what opens. So you're going to turn it. So this is what we were just doing. That's your slip knot. You're going to turn it like this. You're going to put one single crochet right next, that's the slip knot. So there's a stitch right next to that slip knot. You're going to put a single crochet in there. And then you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And fasten off with a sewing tail. So again, you can pull your slip knot closed, that's your little oval nose. You're going to make another knot. And again, I'm going to use this tail to put a knot. I'm still going to sew it on, I'm just not going to knot it on. But So that's your nose. So everything's done. I'd reach my hat. So make sure that you're at the front. Make sure your seam is at the back, even though it's really hard to see. So when I sewed ears on, it was very difficult for me to do, but I don't sew well. And it's kind of hard when there's nothing underneath this sucker. So I sewed the ears on fairly close to the hole, I'm like one row down. So I can't really make any suggestions to you other than I'm holding it with my hand here while I try to attach it. So I'm going to go into the hat and then into the ear. This is very, very, very difficult for me as somebody who doesn't sew to do something like this. So I just went in and out, in and out, holding the ear down like this. So I've got my one ear sewn on and I think it's probably sewn on pretty good. It feels pretty tight. So under here, and this is the ear here that I've got in my hand. I'm going to go down into the ear and I'm just going to pop up because I want to make a knot. So pull back and forth like that to tighten your knot. It really tightens down good. And then I'm just going to put another one just for safe, safe keeping. I'm going to put another knot going the other direction. And then you can weave in or cut off or do whatever. So I'm just going to cut that off. So it looks different on a head, but that's my ear. So my ears are now on. So at this point, we kind of have an idea of, oh, you know what we forgot to make is the bow. Let's do that. And then 
we'll have a better idea where the hair is going to go. So I'm going to do my bow in red, but you can do your bow in whatever color you're using for whatever color you did around your hat and whatever color you're going to use for this. Mine today is going to be red. So you're just going to do another slip knot. So there's two parts to this bow. This is the first part. Chain 13. So for the next six rounds, you're going to put 12 single crochets in this bad boy. So single crochet 12. That's my 12. Pull my slip knot closed. You're going to chain one and turn. So you're going to do this till you, uh, till you basically have eight rows. And I will meet you back and we'll do the little tie thing in the middle. Don't forget, you got to get into this first stitch. So don't hold it like this. Pull this back. Find that first stitch and then don't forget the last stitch which is a turny over kind of a stitch um, you want to keep your sides straight this is a bow so like a blanket or a scarf or anything it's kind of imperative because you don't want a funny looking bow so it's kind of imperative that you keep your edges straight and the only way to keep your edges perfectly straight is to make sure you're getting into this first stitch and then this last stitch I'll show you. Because most people go to this stitch and they think they're done. They just think that's a little overhang. Well, that's not an overhang. If you have a V looking at you, a V shape, you have one more stitch. And it's right there. That guy right there. That's a stitch. you got to make sure you get into that stitch to keep your sides straight. And then make sure you're getting into the first stitch to keep this side straight. So anyway, continue and I'll meet you back here. Okay, that's my eight. So I am going to, I am going to, you don't need to do this. I'm going to tell you there's a couple of things you can do here. So I've made my bow and I crocheted a little dealio for the center of the bow. When I make smaller bows, I cut off enough I weave, I take my needle and I weave across half the stitches, so six stitches across, and then I wrap with the yarn, I just wrap the middle of my bow. So there are two ways you can do it. And then you would just, you know, cut it off, tie a knot in the back where you wrapped it and then sew it to your thing. I'm going to make my center because I think the bow looks better that way. So that means I'm not going to need a sewing tail because I'm just going to use what I finish with. You'll see what I mean. So just cut enough off. If you're going to do what I'm going to do, you just cut enough off that you can just weave this in, both ends in. Doesn't matter where, as long as it's weaved in, you can go across your stitches if you want. So when you pull, I'm not sure what the heck that's there for. So when you pull, um, pull back. So doesn't get out of shape. I have no idea what this is. I must have snagged something on there. That looks horrible. Anyway, I'm going to hide this. I'm afraid if I try to cut that off, it's just going to unravel my whole bow. So I'm just going to leave it and hope it just gets hidden in the, in the bow. I don't think my grandkids are really going to care. Uh, if, I, if it looks too bad, I'll just make another one off camera. So pull your corner back out so it's not distorted. So I didn't need any of these, so I just tucked them both in. So to make the center, you're going to make a slip knot. This is fast. You're going to chain four. 
And then um, for the next 10 rounds, I just single crocheted three. So that's what I did. I'll meet you back after 10 rows. Don't forget to chain one and turn in between. And don't forget to get into all of those three stitches. So I've got my 10 rows done. So if you don't like the raw edge, which I do, I love the raw edge, you can put a single crochet in each, well, not really stitches, wherever you can jam your needle in, you can do one single crochet around. But I like the raw edge, so I'm gonna fasten off here. So I'm gonna fasten off with a tail to not only sew this shut around the bow, but to sew the bow to the, to the hat. I almost said the doll. Because I have done a Hello Kitty doll. I do a lot of dolls. So tuck this guy away because you don't need him at all. So this is all in my Etsy shop. So if you haven't, if you would like written patterns more than watching a video, I've got a crap ton of patterns in my Etsy shop. You can find that link below. So. You're going to squish this guy down like that. You're going to wrap him around. So perf preferably at the back, you're going to sew. <laughs> On camera might be more helpful. So I'm just going to make sure that this is turned right around to the back, whichever way you want your back. And I'm just going to whip stitch. Well, I'm going to kind of whip stitch. So a whip stitch is back loop to back loop, and I'm going to go in all the all the loops, all four of them. It doesn't give it any better of a hold. I just don't need to be neat about it. We use whip stitches just to be neat about it. But this is getting sewn to the hat. You're not even going to see this part. So once I have that, which is not tight, like I can still move this around. So you can do whatever you want. Oh, that is going to drive me. There, I'm going to pull that down so that's still sticking up a bit. But that's going to be at the back zone to the doll, you know, or the hat. You're not going to see it. Anyway, so that's the front of my bow. That's what your bow is going to look like. So let's sew this bow on. Um, so after I've sewed my side shut, I'm going to come up here. I want to make a knot because I want this to be snug. Pick an ear, any ear, and you're going to sew right near the ear. <laughs> so I'm just going to go down and I'm just going to grab some hat. I would say I'm a poet and didn't know it, but I already know I am. Published. But anyway, that's another day, another story. Make sure it's where you want it. I want it like literally right at the ear. Just to have enough room for uh so I'm gonna go down into the hat and just go back and forth. Make my life easy. I'm so used to sewing on stuff that's stuffed. I had to reteach myself how to sew the other way. And if you follow me long enough, you know I don't sew well. So I'm just trying to keep my um, my stuff underneath that bow tie, <laughs> the bow tie, because um, I don't want anybody to see, but I'm still trying to keep it nice and neat. So I would say that's probably good. I only got a couple of things in here. So um, when I do my knot, I need to make sure that I am staying underneath this bow so you can't see it through the um, hat but I also went into the bow just to make it tighter and then I'm going to go through the loop and I'm going to make my knot and I'm going to come back the other way going into the bow I'm going to make another knot through that loop really back and forth tug it creates a nice knot that's very hard to get open. And then I'm going to weave a little bit 
but not much. But I am going to go down into the bow and do some weaving. But it's up to you. It's your hat. And that's nice and tight. So I'm just going to snip her off. And that's our bow. So now we know where um now we know where we can put our eyes so everything's a little distorted right now until you get it on a head of a little girl but it gives you an idea of where your eyes can go i'm gonna pin mine because um pinning stuff in place and then standing back and looking at it works better for me so i'm gonna come down decently low on this because um, it ha this cat has no mouth, and I need room for the whisker. So this cat has no mouth, it just has this nose. So I wanted the nose down fairly low to the brim. So that's what I came up with. And then keep in mind, the whiskers kind of make it too, so... It's hard to see when it's not on a hat. I at least have the other one to compare it to. But it's hard to tell. So the whiskers come right off the side of the head, literally. So um, that looks like it's fairly in the middle. I got my nose lined up with my middle guy there. So I'm going to start sewing stuff on. I tilt you down a bit. So I like to hold things close to me when I sew. First things first, let's stick this guy down through the hat because we're going to use him to tie onto. So I probably have an extra long sewing tail, but I like to have I like to have the the room to be able to um, sew however I want and as many times as I want. And my needle just came undone. Sometimes you gotta lick it to stick it. So I'm gonna do long stitches in the back, short stitches in the front. Not that they're gonna be overly noticeable because it it's black. And black is just very hard to see. So really you only need to put like six stitches in this. It's only a magic ring of six. So when I come back around to my um, my tie. I'm gonna tie this really tight, like really pull on that, and I'm gonna do a double knot, and it's gonna be ever so small. You won't even be able to feel it. I can't even feel that. I can't even feel the yarn. So it's not gonna. It's not gonna feel horrible on the kid's head or anything. So. We do the same thing with this guy. There, yeah, I might have to fix my bit. Anyway, I'm gonna go sew the nose on and then I'll meet you back here. Next is the whiskers. They are difficult. They are difficult to get into the same spot on either side. So um, I had to do this a couple of times. So you need a nice long piece. We're going to do all three at the same time with one piece. Well, actually, if I can get six in there, I'm going to do it. So I don't know how long that is. A couple, 30, 30 inches? I don't know. So I... I'm going to do the same concept. I'm going to leave this piece um, to tie at the back. Because I'd rather tie it than just do a slip knot and just leave it weaved in. So, these are very difficult to do. Because they're not actually difficult to do. Technically, they're fairly easy. But, they're hard to get even on both sides. So um, leave some at the back for tying. Don't pull this all the way through. You won't need all this anyway. For So um, 
come up to a spot and when you go down you're going to come down and you're going to pop out where you next you want your next whisker to start so then when you pull hold the thing at the back so don't pull tight because this is going to be going on a child's head you're you're going to want the the give so your next stitch you're going to go in and you're going to come out where you want your third one to start and then you can put your third one in wherever you want I'm going to go up here and if you don't like the look of it then you can turn around and do it again. Actually, this one I'm going to change. The reason I'm going to change is because I'm going to kind of lower. I'm going to lower where it goes in. I had to do this so many times on my other one. If you could just get things right the first time, this world would be great. So you can, because we have enough, you can just kind of skip across the hat and do the other side. However, there's a hat that goes on a child's head, so... You kind of can't, but what we want to do is at the back, and don't pull tight, but you want to just kind of weave over to the other side, only on this side. You don't want to go through to the other side, because you'll see it, and you don't want to see it. So you got to make sure that you're just grabbing the loops at the back. And I'm just going to scooch my way over to where I left my tail. And I'm going to tie an ever so light knot. I want the knot small, but I really don't want to pull tight on the first knot. I want to pull tight on the second knot. And then you can cut it off. If you pull tight on the first knot, this is going to get all distorted, and you don't want that distorted. So that those are whiskers number one, using your same piece. Hopefully you can get uh, three more whiskers out of your same piece. This is where it gets tricky. you got to try to match it up. Okay, so I got my whiskers are not horrible. They don't quite match, but I mean, so that's the inside air hat, which uh, you obviously can see for yourself. So the last thing we have to do is put these ties on. So I measured these at 33 inches. And, and we still cut off a good chunk, but um, so I did six red and six white. So you can go ahead and do all that. If you want yours just red, then do 12. If you want yours just white, do 12. But I did six red, six white, 33 inches. And I'll meet you back here when you're done. All right, now that you're all done, so we're going to separate these. So we need to separate these evenly. So six and six. So I have three white and three red. You're going to find a spot in your ear flap that is not necessarily central, but close enough. So I'm upside down and backwards because I'm trying to do this on camera. So stick your hook through there. You're going to want to pull tight to get your hook right around it all and pull through. So then you're going to pull it until it's even here. So pull it until it's even. And then you're going to tie a knot up here. So pull ever so tightly. That's the front of my hat. And we're going to braid. 
So you want to separate these into three sections of four. So I've got two red, two white. I'm going to do the same thing with the middle section and then the same thing with the last section. And then you're just going to braid. So if you don't know how to braid, let me start again. You have your three sections. Let me get on camera. You have your three sections. You're going to take this and you're going to go over the middle and then you're going to pull the middle out. You still have three sections. You're always just going over the middle. So now you're going to put that over the middle and you're going to pull the middle out. So now this piece is the middle. And you're going to go over the middle and pull the middle out. So all you're doing is going over the middle, but the middle is constantly changing. So that's how you braid. So we braid all the way down. You can braid as far down as you want. You can stop right here if you want and then leave these tangling, but you're not going to be able to do it up very well around the child's neck. So these are meant to have a purpose. They are meant to tie up underneath the child's neck so that the ear flaps actually work. So these are only fall hats. They're not winter hats. They're not made of wool or cotton. But, uh, I mean, I just used acrylic, which is still water resistant, so. So once you get down far enough that you think that you've got enough to leave a knot, you're just going to grab this whole thing. Don't worry about grabbing the braid because you're going to have to make a knot. But you can pull that down. You just want to make sure you get all the pieces of yarn in there. So before you tighten it, just pull it down to where there's no knot or no braid. Actually, you braided too far. So don't do what I did. I was trying to scooch it down and I ended up tightening it. So we get it to the bottom of the braid and now we can tighten it. So pull it as tight as you can and then you're going to leave whatever you want to leave. Um, you can put a pom pom on the bottom of that too if you wanted to. That's one side. There, I got my two ties done. So if you want this bigger, um, you can go ahead and do that. Just know that when you tie it, it's not going to tie very well. Like it won't stay tied if it's any bigger. And you certainly don't want to be messing around all the time. So, there we have it. Our Hello Kitty hat in red. Our Hello Kitty hat in pink. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.